Fadal, Fadal, sir. I see many uh, notes. <laughs> like if, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is. If, if someone, for example, is, is not a Muslim, mm -hmm. what's the difference between this book and that book? Excellent question. It, because this is a general question. Very good question. This they say book. Both from this book, the Quran, is Kalamullah, Ghair Makhluk. It is the words of Allah, not a part of the Makhluk. It was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, and preserved word by word, letter by letter, harf by harf. Even the pronunciation is preserved. Okay. This book is based on some of the writings that are based on some of the writings of some of the writings of some of the writings that might have been the followers of Jesus, but it's definitely been corrupted. And I'll prove it. The Quran, what language do you read it in? You yourself? Me, Arabic. Arabic? Yes. What language did the Prophet speak? Arabic. Yes. What, what language was the Quran first compiled in? Arabic. What language is the Mus'haf of Uthman that all our Qur'ans are based off? It's in Arabic. Arabic. Yes. What did Isa speak? Aramaic. Aramaic yes. what, his followers were fishermen in Acts, in the Bible. It shows, right? So now the, oldest, the no. oldest scriptures of the Bible today are in Greek, right. not in Aramaic. Right. The oldest, Google it. No, there no. were... Sure. I remember reading and even perhaps commenting with someone years ago that the Bible, the original Bible, was Aramaic. That is true, but... And uh, there were scrolls and uh, a, a lot of the paraffins destroyed on purpose. Exactly. And besides that, because of the printing method, certain things were purposefully... You are exactly out. right. So this is exactly right. So original writings were in Aramaic of Jesus' followers, peace be upon him. Right? We love Isa, Jesus, we love his followers, they were on the truth. But their writings are not what's in here today. The earliest manuscript of the New Testament, you can go home, look this up, is in Koine Greek, the way we have it. And it's from, the, the, there's, there's one paper from second to third century after Jesus, that's side of a credit card. And then the earliest of complete manuscripts around six to 700 years later. So what happens when you get that type of a change, you get things like this, okay? A quantum leap. Yeah, so let me show you an example here. This is the genealogy of Jesus in the Bible, okay? What I've done, I've actually- According to Matthew. According to Matthew and according to Luke, we'll go over. I've actually written them out. Okay. And tell us. All right. Nice. So this is when we look at the Matthew in Matthew. This is here. When you look at Luke, it's there. Now look at, and I'll show you in the actual book. It says, and Jacob begot Joseph, mm -hmm. thus the husband of Mary, to whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So according to this, Jesus was the son of Joseph, who was the son of Jacob. Excellent, right? This is, there you go, okay? Now, let's look at the same genealogy in Luke. Luke 3.23. Now, Jesus himself began his ministry about 30 years of age, being supported as the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. So here, Joseph is, Joseph is no longer the son of Jacob, he's the son of Heli. But is it possible mm -hmm. that Jacob could be translated as Heli? So, great question. Just a question. Sure, great question. This is why I wrote the whole thing out, right. okay? So you have, in, in Matthew, going down to Jesus, Jacob, uh, Jesus, Joseph, Jacob, Mathan, Elazar, Eluid, Achim, Zondak, Azor. You see all these names? Now, let's go in Luke. Jesus, Joseph, Heli, Matat, Levi, Melichi, Jannah, Joseph. Totally different names. How many mistranslations do they have? You see, even the numbers don't match. Here you have 43 going back to Abraham. Here you have 56 going back to Abraham. And the interesting thing is from Abraham down to number 15, David, is the same in both. So what happens is when you had people writing down these manuscripts, 
Once they went past there, they started to make addition, subtractions, guesses, you know, so that what happens is you, you end up with not the same account because this is not the word of God preserved. After this David is David and Goliath. Exactly, everything. everything. Now let me show you some let me show you some more just to give you an idea. Here in 2 Samuel chapter 24, 24, verse 9. Then Jacob gave the sum of the number of the people of the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and men of Judah were 500,000 men. So how many in the battle between Israel and Judah here? How many? 800 to 5,000. Excellent. Now, in the same Bible, in the same Bible, First Chronicles, Chapter 21. Chronicles supposed to be like today's press. Excellent. <laughs> chapter 21, First Chronicles, chapter 21, verse 5. And Job gave them the sum of the number of the people of David. All Israel was 1,100,000 men who drew up the sword against Judah, who had 470,000 men who drew up the sword. So now we went from 800,000 to 100, 1,100,000 of Israel and 500,000 to 470. Let me give you another example. I have 50 plus marked out, but I'll, I think I'll give you. Uh, the Chronicles because they were the press. Mm. <laughs> exactly. So this is the difference between this and this. This is the words of Allah preserved without a single contradiction. We have made the challenge here on video to everybody. Find me one contradiction. I'll leave Islam in front of you. Find me one. But this is filled with contradictions. Right? I, I mean, uh, I'll give you a couple just for fun. Here is Mishal. Therefore, Mishal, the doctor of, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Mishal, doctor of Saul, the daughter of Saul. So not like there's a different Mishal because they'll be like, oh, different one. No, no. She had no children till she died. Okay. Same Mishal, same Bible, except now we're in 2 Samuel. In 21, 8, whom she bore, Saul, had five sons of Mishal, the doctor, daughter of Saul, whom she brought up as Adriel, the son of Brilai. Now the same Mishal, same father Saul, had five children. So did she have no children till she died, or did she have five kids? It can't be both. <laughs> I was raised at this. Right. Let me let me show you one more thing. One last thing. And this one, this is in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Exodus 22, verse number 20 through 21. And if a man beats his male or female slave with a rod or a servant, so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. So if you beat your servant to death, if he lives one day, no punishment for you. What kind of God is this? Who, the, the gentleman was here earlier saying that Jesus is God, he's the one that revealed this. This, this is what Jesus preached? to beat your slaves or to death? 